Hello sword friends, oh my god, it's all done, the wakazashi is finished, and this is part 3 where it is all mounted and sorted and done. What you can see here in the dimensions and whatnot is that the handle is about 8 inches long, which is a little longer than your average wakazashi. The nagesa or blade is also 22 inches long without the habaki, which is almost katana length. Katana would be about 24 inches long with the habaki, this one is about... 23 inches long. It also has a katana style sori, which is the curvature. And overall, the, the weight is a little lighter than your average katana, but considering this is an L6 and considering its size, it's pretty much on par for what you would expect at one pound, 11 ounces, with a point of balance about five inches from where the suba or guard is. It's, it's a pretty stout little blade and a meaty feeling little blade in the hand. Let's take a look at some more of the fun stuff. What you can see here that you wouldn't be able to see in the other videos is one, the blade is polished and two, the blade is mounted. And that's kind of the update for this particular iteration of this video. The mount is just spectacular. It's done in a cherry bark style theme. There's also a metal, metal koijiri, which you can see here. The metal koijiri is, well, metal. And the contrast between kind of satin or basic finishes and glossy finishes is something that I played with in this overall mount. You can see there are copper sepa, and there's the same kind of general theme all over the place. The paint job is this cherry bark theme where it goes from brown to red to a black, and then has, well, basically those are the colors that you see. You see brown, you see red, you see black. The red is a little admittedly hard to see. The kurigata is a horn kurigata. I didn't do that in metal. I wanted it to kind of blend into the overall theme of the blade. And just, I'm, I'm enamored with this overall paint job. I'm just super happy with how it came out. It looks awesome. It's just, it has a lot of subtlety that you don't normally see. Also, the makugi is something that is a metal makugi. It's a copper pin that has been Roku showed to kind of match with the Sepa. Personally, I'm really happy with that. I like that there's a metal Makugi in there and I think it adds a little contrast where the Manuki may generally be missing. The paint makes up for it in all, but the metal Makugi kind of makes up where Manuki might be missing, at least in my opinion. Also note that the Ska Suka has a general shape that would accommodate Ito in the absence of this paint. So if somebody decided to wrap it in Samegawa and rewrap it. It has the general shape to accentuate the emperor node and whatnot. It has a, a shape that would accommodate it and that's what that little bulge is. Overall, I'm actually pretty happy with how it feels in the hand. The gloss feel might or look might give you the impression that it's really slippery, but it actually holds in the hand pretty well, surprisingly enough. I don't have any trouble or any idea that it would slip out. It also has a small suba, which would stop your hands if you're doing any stabbing motions or something like that. The habaki is actually kind of a cool shape. It has a kind of mountain texture to it and just a generally different theme. This is supposed to be a cherry bark theme and it almost looks like the blade is sticking out of a branch almost. It has a kind of general wood type theme to it. But on to the pokey pokey stabby part which is what most people are actually interested in. What you can see here is that this has been polished. It was done by Josiah Boomershine and he actually did a really amazing job on the polish. I'm really happy with it. Josiah has very, very economical rates, something that you can actually afford to have polished if you're if you're doing this. I'm really happy with how the Hamon came out. I'm also really happy with how the burnishing on the Kasaki came out. He did a really good job. L6 is kind of a difficult metal to deal with. The Yukote is clean and crisp, and I can see the definition on the Boshi, which is kind of the Hamon that goes up into the Kasaki, and I'm just I'm really happy with how it all came out. It's very clean, very nice, very crisp. And I think he did he did a great job, really. I'm very happy. All of the details in the blade are brought out and the light right now really isn't doing it justice. There's a lot more detail in the Hamon that you're unable to see due to my dodgy camera work. Uh, what you can see here is maybe the Hamon a little bit better and you can also see that the flats of the blade, the planes are very even and crisp and nice and flat and just like smooth as glass, what you would expect from a blade in this price point from a maker of this caliber and from a polisher of this expertise. It's overall just a really, really fun blade. Something that's almost like a, a young 
person's katana, like a young boy or girl's katana, or just a really hefty wakizashi. Uh, overall, the project came out really well, and I'm super happy with it. I hope you've enjoyed the process, and cheers, and thanks for watching.